Let's make a pom-pom wreath. Welcome back to another Yarn Inspirations tutorial. I'm your host, Kristen Mangus of Good Knit Kisses. Let's get started. Today, we're going to make a beautiful pom-pom wreath in the colors of fall. We've got greens and pumpkins, crimson cranberry colors, yellows and browns, all the colors of the turning leaves and colors of the season. And be sure and get your supplies. We'll show those on the screen. You'll need an 18 inch foam wreath or a wire wreath as I've done here. You will also need to get some scissors, be it long or short. And of course, you're going to need your yarn. You'll need two balls of Bernat Softy Chunky. It's a super bulky number six weight yarn. The green color I'm using for contrast A is color Eucalyptus. You'll also need two balls of contrast B, which is color Glowing Gold. Then for colors C and D, you'll need one ball of Bernat Blanket Yarn. I'm using color Cranberry, which is a red color. And in a larger Ball. I'm also using color pumpkin spice for our orange color. We need one ball of each of those. Now the brown color is Bernat Pipsqueak. It's the only one that's a bulky five weight yarn. That one is a smaller ball shown, but you can use a larger ball. We're using color chocolate for contrast E. And we'll get right into the pattern and show you how to make the pom-pom and how to tie them on. A couple of different tricks as to tying them on. We hope you enjoy. To download your pattern, click on the link in the description below. For today's pattern, we're using Yarnspiration's Bernat Pom Pom Wreath. And this is a craft. It's not necessarily knitting or crochet. And we're working with a wreath form. You can use foam or wire in my case. And you're using different textures and colors of yarn. Now you can make this winter one, which I can show in another video, but I'm gonna make one for the fall. To use the fall colors, just rewind in the video and you'll see the substitutions. So I also want to point out the tools I'm using. I am using this Bernat Pom Pom and Tassel Maker and I'm using just two of the sizes in there. And I've got actually two pairs of scissors and I have some scissor sharpeners and I recently started using these and they're really great for making these pom poms because you just do this and it sharpens them. I actually liked cutting uh, with my maker. Um, I actually liked cutting them with the longer scissors and I'll show you how to do that. And then I liked trimming them with the smaller ones. So whatever you need to do, but I want you to know it's okay to use two different kinds of scissors. All right, let's get started making our pom-poms. All right, so I'm going to make a pom-pom and the pom-poms listed in this pattern, you can make a four finger wide pom-pom, which matches this one, which becomes a three inch or 76 and a half or 76.2 millimeter size pom-pom or a three um, finger size, um, wrapping with your three fingers, um, or it's measured at two and a half inches or 63 and a half millimeter pom-pom. So that's all I'm using from this set. Now, what I'm also doing is I'm using the base or even the top of this uh, cover here. I'm actually using this cover for cutting my trimmings into, and I'll show you how beneficial that is if you're using this set. What I'm doing is I use um, the side of this as a measuring device. So I'm pulling out one, two lengths of this to make my tail. And we're just going to take one of our um, pom-pom makers. Let's do the big one so you can really see it. And I lay it across. Just grab my pom-pom maker and go right across and put it into that notch. And that's the beginning of where I measured that or the length of where I measured it to and then going around here and then um, letting it lock in. I just hold it on. Now, if you're right or left-handed, you'll do it the opposite way. I hold on to this left-hand side and then I use my right-hand side to wind it around. Okay, now hold this to the side because you'll want that. You're just gonna take your yarn and wrap it all the way around now, you may have seen a video where you take the length and hang it over the side, but if you do it this way, you'll see why it's okay to leave this. And if you were wrapping around with the already cut, it's going to get in your way and wrap up in your pom-pom, and that's no good. So just continue wrapping around. And when it gets nice and full and about even around here, that's when you can stop. You can make it kind of pooch out a little bit. It just uses more yarn. The more you wrap, the more yarn you use. So, and on the ones that have Bernat Softy Chunky, you'll actually wind them, um, you can actually wind them a little bit more full and you'll have plenty of yarn. Uh, actually, all of them but the Pipsqueak, you should have uh, plenty of yarn in the quantities that I gave 
uh, especially if you use the big balls and this, the um, Burnett blanket. So you just use a little over one ball on the softy chunky, so have no fear on going over and over wrapping. Okay, so I've just wound this this entire time. There's no time lapse here. Just chatting it up with you. All right, let's get this nice and full. Okay, so I've let it go uh, all the way to here and it's past these little divot points here. Okay, that one kind of went over a little bit. Let's get that there. So wrap it all the way around and we're just gonna take our scissors and cut and then take this part. I'm actually gonna use my longer scissors and I'll show you why. We're gonna take this part here and clip it. Okay, that's the that's my right side. Of course, left-handed do the opposite. So now we're gonna pinch this and pull it and it will pull the this tail here. So let's pull it. Look at that. Now it's all ready for you to uh, tie it in a knot. I'm gonna take the part where I cut it and flip it over so it holds it down on the table. We're just gonna tie a knot with our tail. hold that make sure I get that tied in nice okay and then now I'm going to take my scissors and my longer scissors like I said do work out better I'm just going to slip it right into that groove and start cutting you want to make sure you have nice and sharp scissors but they, they don't quite get all the way into the grooves you can also like push on it and then use that link to your benefit and kind of make a little fulcrum and push upward like this and as you push upward, it actually causes that blaze to, blade to sort of slice into the yarn for you. Let it work. Let the scissors work for you and don't work against it. I actually have my kids helping me with some of this and they had trouble with their scissors. So this is what I found was best when we took it on this groove and pulled upward instead of just trying to guide it around. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it makes sense to me. Now what I do is I kind of take my scissors and fluff it out this way. I'm gonna leave this guide in here and now we're just gonna put this over and use it as a little trimming bucket and I found that um, I can use either scissors I liked using these smaller ones um, for trimming and this tr this is how we trim it up just use it and trim it up and make it kind of round here and um, once you think you've kind of got it, go ahead and flip on over to the other side. I use this here as a guide to keep this flat on the bottom. Let's go around. And you see these long strands? You've got to not get those in the way because that's what you're using to tie it into your wreath. So let's make this kind of fluff out a little bit and continue trimming this up so it's rounded. And that bucket works nicely for most of the trimmings. I've kind of got it out of there a little bit. Okay. So now we're gonna take our guide and take it off. And you see it's kind of pushed out a little bit. Now fold it in half and put your ties out to the side and it makes a little bit of a teardrop shape. I'm gonna fluff it and flatten it and then we'll go around here and continue trimming it. We just wanna make sure we have a nice round shape. Now don't over trim or it's just gonna get smaller and smaller. This is just for getting those pieces that are just stuck out like this. Okay, so now you have got your first pom-pom made. Kind of give that a little shake, fluff it up and move it to the side and continue making all the rest of your pom-poms. You'll move on and make as many as you need in the larger size with either winding around your fingers, however many times it says in the pattern, winding around the four you do 60 times, or you do three fingers and winding around about 40 times and tying that off. So use your um, fingers or use your uh, pom-pom maker, make the quantity in the large size and the small size in the different sizes. The only difference I will say is when I used the pip squeak and made these larger pom-poms, I actually made, instead of making 10, I made just six of these. And in the smaller, I made um, three of these instead of 
the uh, six that it called for. I just didn't make quite as many of them and only bought one ball. So just so you know how much I used. All right, uh, pause your video and uh, meet me back with your wreath and we will uh, show how to tie those on and get your wreath made. See you soon. Okay, so you have your balls off to the side here and you've got your wreath, whether it's wire or it's like a solid uh, foam, that's okay. Um, you could even do a picture frame, um, something square or rectangular, whatever you'd like to do. Maybe put a big um, piece of um, uh, foam core and wrap it with yarn and have your initial there, um, whatever you'd like to do. Okay, so uh, I'm going to tie these on and you just go around and strategically tie them on in the places that you'd like. You can go around with the wire one. It's really kind of cool because you can pull it through and tie it this way from the front and tie it in a bow and leave it there. Uh, if you want to be able to access it later, you can tie them from the back and turn it over and put your pom-pom down and then pull it up from the back and tie it this way. Now you might also want a crochet hook to help pull that through. So you might want a hook uh, to pull that yarn through and um, make it easier for you to, to tie it on. But I would definitely suggest, uh, let's see, we'll show how to pull that through. There we go. And save your fingers. When you tie this on, I would just tie it in a bow, just like you're tying your shoes, okay? And then make sure to get it to where you can still access and get those tails, and then it stays on, and then you can tie the next one on to the ends, like this, and then get one for the inside and use, say, the smaller ones and you can make them as full or not. Like some of these I didn't make as full because I wanted to have a little bit of a texture thing. And tie this on and tie a knot. And then that way, when we flip it over, um, you will, once you get them all on here, um, you won't see any of the tails. And, uh, excuse me, I've got all the extra fuzz. You won't see any of the tails, and then you can switch this out later, switch out your colors for another holiday. So continue uh, tying all of yours on, and I'm gonna give you one more tip if you want to try it a different way. Pause your video and continue or keep watching. So what I've done is I have started placing my pom-poms in sort of a circle here and um, putting all their tails sort of in the up position or over to the side so I can see them. And then I'm laying my wreath upside down on here and it lifts it up above it. And what I'm going to do is just tie them on from this direction so I can actually see what it's going to look like. Now this is going to be from the back. So what I did is I placed my major colors of pom-poms, the larger ones, and then now I'm coming back through and filling in a spot where I think it will go and maybe putting them sort of on the bottom ish under this area here and finding where there's a gap or a hole and just kind of popping it over in that area and then I will um, kind of scoot that down in so when I get to that area I'll know to uh, slide that ball in all right so continue um, getting your things placed and tying them on and in a moment I'll show you what it looks like when I get all of mine tied on see you soon and here is the wreath with all the beautiful fall colors in. And uh, if you need any more, just add more. You can add your initial to the middle, put in your monogram, hang it, uh, paint it, wrap it in yarn, whatever you'd like to do. I hope you have enjoyed making your pom-pom wreath. And be sure and uh, tag us on social media showing us photos of your wreaths on your doors. I look forward to seeing it. On behalf of Yarnspirations and Good Knit Kisses, I'm your host, Kristen, wishing you happy fall. <laughs> Bye, everyone.